Hi everyone, how are you? It's Dr. Emily, functional podiatrist, human movement specialist. I am here to speak to you today about a Morton's toe, Morton's foot. What is going on with that long second digit? So if you look down at your feet right now, take a little look. If you see that your second digit is longer than your first, that is called a Morton's toe. Now the first thing that I wanna correct around this is that a Morton's toe, long second toe, has absolutely nothing to do with a Morton's neuroma. That the finding of these pathologies in podiatry were actually from two different Dr. Mortons, so not the same person is associated with Morton's toe and Morton's neuroma. Now, a Morton's toe or a long second digit is actually a long second metatarsal. So if you look at a foot x-ray, you will see that the longest metatarsal in every single person's foot is the second. Now in someone who has a Morton's toe, their second metatarsal is longer than it should be. So it is actually not a long second toe, it is a long second metatarsal. And that is in relation to the first and to the third. Now, the functional impact of a long second digit, this is where there's lots and lots of confusion on the internet, of course there is, right? So a long second digit, what this does, a few key things, is that if you are in a closed toed shoe and you are sizing your shoes to the first and not the longest toe that you have, which is the second, what happens when you go into the shoe is you do this. You have no choice, right? There's not enough room, so you push that toe back and you hammer it or you contract it. Now, what happens when you do that is that, yes, you get a hammer toe, but when we get hammer toes, we start to put what's called retrograde pressure into the plantar aspect of the joint and the metatarsal head. So a lot of people with Morton's toe get hammer toes and then get submet to pain. So they might get a callus, IP case, these little tiny seed corns, uh, pain, irritation underneath that second met head. So that's a very common finding that you will see in a Morton's toe. Now, something else that you can see that's very common is that when you have a hammer toe from the Morton's toe and you have chronic persistent pressure to the bottom of the joint, you start to stress all of the ligaments and the soft tissue structures underneath that second MPJ. And what can happen is you can start to tear, degenerate those ligaments. Now there's a specific ligament called a plantar plate and your plantar plate is an extension of your plantar fascia. Your plantar fascia that starts in your heel actually comes forward into all five digits. It crosses the joint and it inserts onto the base of the toe. That part of your plantar fascia is called the plantar plate. And it is the most important stabilizing structure for your digits. It's actually what creates the digit pulling down, which is called purchase. A lot of people think that it is actually your toe flexors that keep your toes on the ground. Not true. It's actually your plantar plate. That is the primary layer of stabilization. If you tear your plantar plate, your toe is going to float. It's going to boop lift up and then could you use your flexor to pull the toe down absolutely but as soon as you relax your flexors boop, the toe is going to pop right back up because you need to have the ligament stability through that plantar plate so that's something really common that you will see with a morton's toe so if i see morton's toe hammer toe submet to pain and a lifting or a loss of purchase in the second Makes sense, I'm not even surprised. Now, if you have a bunion, oh my gosh, we've been speaking about bunions a lot this week on Instagram. If you have a bunion and a Morton's toe, then this is where the stress to the second actually increases. Anytime you have a bunion, you do what's called transfer stress. So you throw the stress of your first MPJ and you throw it over to the second. So you essentially compound this stress that I was just explaining when you have a, a longer second digit and you compound it when the patient or the individual has a bunion. So I kind of call them like strikes, like oh, strike one, strike two, right? Oops, you're out, right? Not in a mean way, but it helps the patient understand that we have these certain structural contributors 
to some of the pathology that we see and a bunion and a long second digit with a hammer toe and a submet and a stress planner plate, boom, you're just checking them, those check marks off the list, right? Okay, so now what can happen when you have a bunion and a Morton's toe that has a hammering and you're starting to stress the plantar plate is you can get a crossover deformity. So if you've ever seen those pictures, just Google if you don't know what I'm talking about. It's called crossover second digit or something like that. And it's where you have a bunion and then your second toe is whoa, way over like this. You might be like, that's what my grandma's feet look like, right? That is because of the bunion, the Morton's toe, the hammer toe, the torn plantar plate. They all work together and it all kind of creates this, this crossover deformity. Soon as you got that, super sorry to tell you, but the only way to correct that is with surgery. Okay, so what do we do? What do we do if we have a long second digit? We make sure that we size our shoes to the second digit, to the longest digit. If you don't, you're gonna create this hammering. So create or choose shoes that have a more supportive shape to your foot type. Okay, second thing that I like to do is if you're starting to get a little bit of a hammering, use the, the toe spacer. So here we got the Naboso Splay. We sell these now on Naboso.com. They are selling like hotcakes. So Naboso Splay toe spacers. I love these. Morton's toe, especially Morton's toe that is contracted and the person has a bunion, for sure indicated to get your Naboso Splays. Other thing that you can do is make sure that you are supporting the pressure underneath the MPJ. So maybe use a metatarsal pad, release your feet every day, do your intrinsic foot strengthening. That is really what we're looking for. Now, outside of that, there's really no other impact and issues with a Morton's toe. Some people will say, oh, I trip over it. That's not true. That's kind of Silly, silly thoughts, right? We don't trip over our longer second digit. Um, it doesn't create issues into the second third. It's not what causes you to spin your heel when you walk. That's not associated to the Morton's toe. It's really everything that I just described. And again, as I wrap up, a Morton's toe, a long second, has absolutely nothing to do with a Morton's neuroma. Can you have a Morton's toe and a Morton's neuroma? Absolutely, but guess what? That's probably just your luck of the draw, and you have both of those. They're not in association. They're just two parallel presentations within the foot. Okay, I hope that that helped. If you have any questions about your feet, do reach out to me through Instagram. I do virtual and in-person consultations. My website is my name, dremilyspickle.com. I hope that you're doing amazing and make sure you follow DR Emily DPM.